Hey, Ted, what's that remote for? Is it for this drone? It is. Look how little that drone is. It's very, very cool. Do you want to take off from my hand? Let me try. All right. Whoa. Cool. Drones. This is the SEMA X20 Pocket Drone. The miniaturization and accuracy improvement of yeah. small electronics like MEM sensors um, have allowed these to exist at this tiny scale, which is $25. When we talk about drones, the ones we're most interested in are like copters. Um, we've seen these Chinese fire drones. There's a firefighting drones, which would be the opposite. There are window washing drones. Came back from CES and saw a single drone copter that's meant to fit a human. So there's two pieces to this drone puzzle. There's the controller and the drone. So up and down controls elevation, left That's and right left controls side. yaw, and then forward and backward controls pitch, right and left control <laughs> roll. And then two buttons to crash land. Woo! And chop your finger. <laughs> Let's take it apart. <laughs> immediate impressions. These things are put together just, they're so great. You could theoretically replace many of the components on here. I could replace this battery if I wanted to. I could just desolder it and put a new one on. I could replace any of these motors, no problem. Um, I think there were two screw sizes, one on the controller and one on the on the drone itself. And then it had this very cute way of uh, going together that there are these little duders that just pop on the outside like this. And then it has four screws on the bottom securing it. Starting with the controller, um, there's a set of batteries, the battery door, uh, um, around 10 screws. They were all the same size screw, which made it really easy. Inside, there was one PCB. Uh, there are the two joysticks, which are components onto themselves and soldered on. Two other momentary buttons and the switch. This is, this is cool because like all of these are off the shelf packages. This feels like, you know, like 1980s, 1990s. Yeah. And then this feels like 2019. Small, small little science lesson. We can see this is the antenna and it, it's actually marked antenna here, A-N-T. Um, following that trace back, you can see which component it links to, which is this one. We used a microscope. It's the Beckon BK2461. It's an all-in-one uh, kit that has a, a transmitter and receiver, has its own um, uh, sort of protocol behind it. Um, and so this is its mate that's over the here, mate. Yeah. right there, which is also a Beckon module. The length of this antenna is around 26 millimeters. Um, there are, is a website called an antenna length calculator, and it's just a formula. If I type in the frequency uh, in megahertz, which is 2400, quarter wavelength in inches is 1.17 inches. That's around 26 millimeters. This is one quarter of the length of the wave. Uh, on the other side, uh, we have a you know, slightly more advanced electronics package. Um, way more. Way more advanced. In the middle, we have our microcontroller. Uh, that's that's running everything. It's usually traditional to put your microcontroller on the side of the board because it's going to talk to everything. Sort of the interesting looking package over here, we looked this up. This is an altimeter. So it's using basically air pressure to tell how high the thing is flying. And then one of these bad boys, it's probably an all-in-one package, but it's going to be uh, accelerometer, gyroscope, and a magnometer. Right. So it can really tell where it's pointing and where it's going. And let's talk about each of those. Um, we have Little examples from Adafruit. This is an accelerometer. So this is going to measure displacement. If something uh, gets moved, accelerated in a certain um, X, Y, or Z axis, it can measure that. And then you have the magnometer or compass. What's interesting about this is that it doesn't require any movement to work. It just knows where it is at all times or where it's pointing. Right. And then what was the third thing you named? Uh, gyroscope. It's it's a um, it's a uh, accelerometer, but for uh, for angles, right? So that it tells if something's pitching to the side or the other side or forward or backward. Right. So with those three sensors uh, working very quickly, this little thing can know where it's at in space at all times. What you have here are four different motors. Two sets are spinning clockwise. Two sets are spinning counterclockwise. Uh, two are in the front, two are in the back, two are on the left, two are on the right. And what that means is at any point in time, uh, each motor is creating thrust, which is pushing air down, and it's also creating torque. Um, 
a great example of uh, torque at play. Uh, this is a doll my dad made out of an electric toothbrush. And uh, if you start running this thing. It's just vibrating. Right? It's just vibrating, but you'll notice he starts to spin. Yeah. And what's happening there is this motor is spinning in one direction and it's causing the whole system to rotate in the opposite direction. That's torque. Uh, you do that in one space and you're going to get a helicopter that just spins in the air and doesn't go anywhere. Um, but if you can run uh, two propellers opposite each other, the torque cancels out and now it's just thrust going down. Because I've got two on the left and two on the right, I can push two of those harder and two less and that'll bank one way the other way because uh, I have two in the front and two in the back I can push this way and that way and then what's really fun is I can slow down my counterclockwise motors and keep my uh, clockwise motor spinning and that can give me what's called yaw yeah. and that's that pivot this is critical, critical feedback I liked this product a lot I really enjoyed taking it apart it was easy to do everything was obvious whoever designed this had a focus on lightness and simplicity it it was very easy. I'm really looking forward to putting it back together. There was no glue. I damaged nothing in the process. I should be able to put this back together and get it flying. That's cool for me. That's great. I really liked the overall cost of this thing. It's $27 and the amount of technology you get for that. Where I think that we feel like they could have gone a little bit farther is just in what it is. We had worked on this project called Racia, which was a race car that you could assemble and sort of build up your own style of race car. And in doing so, you learn about science and friction and wheels and stuff like that. This could be an incredible platform for putting on your own propellers or putting on your own attachments or kind of building your own drone and seeing what happens. Yeah, I, I agree. That would be very cool. Cool. This has been Critical Feedback. feedback. Yeah. Like and subscribe and uh, and tell us what to what we should tear down next. Mm -hmm. And leave comments. We love comments. Do you have all of those things? Should I share my dream drone? Sure. My dream drone. Someone hire us to do this. Some advertising agency friend or something like that. I would like to build a drone situation where I can be in like a cool drone cockpit thing and blow air and make it feel like we're flying through the air like this. And then you'll fly a drone in VR and you wear a VR headset. We'll even do like a projected 360 degree dome around you. So you this super, oh, it'd be so much fun. You could fly through the air like a bird, not just like that nauseating uh, drone racing thing, which is cool, but like, ooh, but like even more real. <laughs> Hire us and we'll do that. That's a thing we'll do. You just give us money. Then we'll do it. That's a good, that was a really good pitch. Okay, cool. <laughs>